last time on Dragon Ball Z. So, you know how I started this one series called Creating a Basketball Simulation? I am going to build a basketball RPG. Future videos are going to primarily focus on the new features that I add that are ready to be demoed. So I was planning on building a mobile game for iOS, and then I decided to switch over to Unity because hey, I could build it on more platforms. And also building it on one of the most popular game engines out right now could have been a great learning experience. I got a lot of great feedback on the last video, I showed some really great code snippets, and yeah, everything was headed the right way. Um, but it's just, it's just... Making a basketball RPG is a lot of work. I did not anticipate the amount of groundwork that was necessary. If you look at my Trello board right now, I still have so much left to do. Finalizing player positions, attributes, archetypes. So, uh, to be continued? But there's a little friend I'd like you guys to meet. You're gonna learn more about him in a second. In light of current events, I've had a lot more free time, so I was able to take this course on pixel art for video games. Even though I prefer to stay on the coding side of things, I thought it'd be nice to flex my artistic muscles. And I'm also using this Photoshop-like application called Photo P. Only difference is it's free. I started off the course by drawing lots of basic shapes like circles, squares, and triangles. And within these lessons, you learn the basic principles of representing 3D objects in a 2D space. Like in this part, I was drawing a ball, and with only three shades of blue, it almost looks 3D. Drawing these kinds of 3D shapes are great for practice and also because they serve as building blocks for other objects. Like in this part, I'm here creating and shading an apple. You see the different shades make it look like it really stands out, like it really pops out at you. I'm a fruit kind of guy, so outside of the course, I was just drawing all different types of fruit. If you guys want the 40 minute video it took to finish this, let me know. <laughs> but you didn't click on this for a fruit tutorial. You want to see me use pixel art to make a game. So I'd like you to meet Q-Boy, who's going to be the main character for the rest of this video. Drawing an actual character was a lot tougher than I thought it was going to be especially because I wanted to make him dark skinned. Surprisingly, not surprisingly, a lot of the principles of shading are a lot easier to apply when, you know, there's range and diversity between the lighter shades of the skin and the darker shades. But I had resolve and it was a lot of fun making it, even though it was tough. I didn't really go off of any kind of template. I just knew what I wanted the head to look like and I wanted him to wear a hat that was blue colored. Along with this, I wanted something that could possibly serve as the new icon for my channel. And surprisingly, it was turning out really well as I went on, especially how the shape of the hat fits snugly on his brown head. After working for about 45 minutes, I finally reached the point where I felt comfortable enough to kind of cut it off, make a version called TTG Boy, and yeah, he's the icon of my channel now. So after creating his head and hat, I then went to work on the rest of his body. I was trying to find something that was a nice contrast between his hat. I kind of settled on this flamingo peach color along with this bright, bright yellow for his pants. So now here I'm drawing each of the frames for this run animation that you saw earlier and you're going to see in the game once I import it into Unity. So the wild thing about all this is, this is after three to four days of taking the course. Of course, I had all day to watch this, obviously, but it really goes to show how a lot of these things, like pixel art or even just drawing in general, it seems kind of scary and reserved to people that are talented for it, but hey, if I can learn it, you can definitely do it. So I'm gonna link that course down below. This is not promoted or sponsored or anything, but I really urge anyone that's getting the kind of itch to delve into it to hey pick up a new skill so after a few hours this is version one of the cuboy sprite sheet as you can see on the bottom four sprites that's the whole run animation that he has and yeah i think i did my thing here i tried to show a nice different blends of colors that would stand out and i think we're ready to import him into unity before we get into full game development if you're new here click that subscribe button and stay a while before I started, I wanted to find a good reference video for making a platformer game in Unity and working with physics and collisions. After watching a few videos, my next step was working on the platform for my platformer game. I settled on this tan block tile. After I created it in Photo P, I exported it as a PNG and I created a demo sketch of the environment. The next thing was adding this rigid body 2D component to my character to give it basic physics and the influence of gravity. So if we test him out right here, 
shaking my head, I forgot to add the Tile Map Collider 2D component to my floor, which will basically give it the same physics as my character, but would make it so that my character can just pass through it. Looks good. Next, I want to add functionality to allow the player to move the character around. So I have to first reference the Rigid Body 2D object, and then I'm going to see if you press the key A, then the character's going to move forward. I want you all to know that I'm not writing this down from memory. I'm looking up guides and videos online as I'm working because there's a bunch of resources out there for working with Unity. So after adding those lines of code and figuring out all the kinks with the rigid body, I think we- Oh man. Actually, I did not figure out all the kinks with the rigid body. Before I figured out why Q-Boy loved flipping around, I'm gonna add code so you can move both left and right and adjust the Y-axis movement so that it's more consistent as you move around. Basically, I'm just going to copy the code I just wrote and then replace the character A with the D and switch of course the direction that you're moving in and this looks good so far Q-Boy can slide both left and right and he's keeping his 10 toes down on the ground uh, in order to fix this issue I had to search everywhere for this one little setting on a rigid body object where you should freeze the Z rotation because for some reason the Z rotation moves and we're good Still need to add more stuff. I want to change the direction that Q-Boy looks at depending on where he's moving. Add these lines of code that's gonna change the direction that his transform object is facing. Do I know why it's vector two instead of vector? I don't. And when we test it out, Q-Boy can now turn. Yup, oh he's going wild now. Now we're gonna get into the good stuff. We're gonna be working with Unity's animation engine. Using the run frames that I created earlier in Photo P, we're gonna make this run animator object. And with this, we'll be able to actually show the run frames whenever Q-Boy is moving. Now, when I open the animation window, I'm gonna get access to this panel where I can just drag all the Q-Boy running images directly onto it and then create my very own custom animation. After you add all the frames to this animation panel, you can then kind of customize it by dragging and spacing them out between each other so you can get the right amount of delay that you want between each different image so after playing around with it I kind of settled on this kind of separation for now I think it looks good and here you have the animator window which holds all the current states that you have defined for your character I have the idle state and the run state every video game you play that has animation will have it represented as a collection of states whether the characters are idle running or crouched so if you didn't know about this already I think this is pretty good knowledge to pick up Q-Boy's idle state will have only one frame for now the next thing we need to do is make a transition variable this thing will decide whether or not we move from the idle state to the run state and vice versa and I'm gonna call it running here running is a boolean and it's gonna be set to true or false depending on whether or not we press the horizontal arrow keys the next thing I do have to do in the code is reference this animator object and use it to set the boolean value of running to true or false depending on the conditions that I just mentioned and while we're here, why don't we add a jump functionality where if the player presses the space button, we're going to momentarily increase the Y velocity of the character. Now let's check out this version of Q-Boy. Oh snap, we got the running animation and he's jumping too. So the gravity on the jumping is a little wonky, but that'll be fixed in the future. So I think that's a good place to end this video. It's getting a bit long and what do you think? So far we've kind of created a 2D platformer demo and I think it looks pretty good. I'm especially proud of the pixel art that I did. It took a while, but it's definitely not the final version either, but I think it's really close to where I want it to be. If you've made it this far in the video, you're really dope, thanks. You might be wondering right now a few things. One especially is why did I call him Q-Boy? Well, well, his name relates to the title of this game, and I don't want to reveal too many details about this game. It's going to be really cool. I've thought it out for <laughs> a good week, 
things and that's a lot longer than i think most of my projects so i have a really good layout for how i think this game is going to look and play and my plan is to finish this game a lot sooner than the basketball rpg series which isn't dead i promise you i just want to get better at game development and work with unity so i can give it the proper justice that i feel like it deserves and on the bright side all this experience i'm gaining with pixel art assets are going to help me create all the assets for that basketball rpg game when we get back to it but in the meantime it's going to be q boy on this channel until further notice and speaking of this channel i just want to thank each and every one of you that like my content comment and the ones that joined my discord it's really great to see that i'm starting to build a community of some sorts and i'm going to do my best to bring out much much better content so in the meantime i want you all to sit back and enjoy the show thanks for watching